because it's been two days in a row that I spent three hours at night trying to edit a HD video. It's a pain in the butt, and I'm not sure anybody really wants to watch to an eight, an 18 minute vlog from me. So I'm gonna try and keep this 10 minutes. So you ready for it? Here we go. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. My name is Joey Fight. I am the founder of thephysicaleducator.com, and more importantly, I'm a phys ed teacher here in Montreal, Canada, where I teach at St. George's School of Montreal. Uh, St. George's School is a private school here, it, right by my neighborhood, um, and I teach grades one, two, three, and six. This is a scope vlog where I do daily f reflections on my teaching, but with this new format, what I'm actually doing is every day there's a different theme and every day I'll be trying to bring something new and something fresh to the scope vlog. On Wednesdays, the theme is reading and review. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to get a lot better at reading uh, or being up to date with current research in phys ed. Um, and the way I'm going about it is I'm kind of seeing, okay, what are areas that I want to improve in? What are areas that I want to improve my school in? And then trying to go out and connect with relevant research uh, that can help me achieve those kind of goals. So for today's uh, first ever reading and review Wednesday, uh, I'm actually going to be talking about nutrition education in elementary school, and here's why. I am incredibly, incredibly blessed to be at a school that offers an amazing lunch program. So to give you an idea, at, at lunchtime, my, my gymnasium turns into cafeteria, which I'm not going to talk about that because I'm not overly pumped about that thing. Um, but uh, the lunch team comes in and they set up this amazing lunch buffet every day. So there's always a hot meal option. Um, the students then have a soup option. They have an amazing salad bar, and I mean like crazy cool salad bar with all kinds of stuff going on in it. And then there's usually a sandwich bar if they want sandwiches, if they're not into the hot lunch. And then finally like um, a drinks and sometimes like some kind of dessert going on. So that's kind of our lunch situation. Now, that sounds like a dream and it really is a dream, especially when you get free lunches, that's amazing. Um, but the thing is, is that a lot of my students go up to the lunch buffet and they're young students is from grade one to grade six have to pick their own lunch here. And they select, they, they make themselves meals that are not very well balanced or very, not very healthily balanced meals. Um, and I often worry about what my students are eating and, you know, the, um, the whole fact that they're not necessarily fueling their bodies to be able to go out and have like a successful afternoon after lunch. So I've been trying to figure out how I could get my kids to eat a little bit healthier, and that is why for this week, I have the title here, it's a super long title. I read a paper called Teaching Approaches and Strategies um, that Promote Healthy Eating in Primary School uh, Children Classes. I can't remember, my handwriting is terrible if you can see that. And it's a systematic review and meta-analysis written by Dean Dudley, Wayne Cotton, and Louisa Peralta, who I doubt is associated to Powell Peralta Skateboards, but if she is, that's super cool. Um, so basically this is a, a meta-analysis, a systematic review that looked at like a billion different studies and tried to pull out some major themes. Now, in those major themes, what they pulled out were eight main strategies. I've got all kinds of notes here. I had like this awesome like annotated version of this paper and I left it at work, but I've got all my notes here on little post-its here to tell you. So of these options, I'm going to try to go off the top of my head here. Uh, of these strategies that they pulled out of these different studies, we had enhanced curriculum, meaning that um, there are specific nutrition programs being taught in the school. We had cross-curricular strategies, so uh, different subject matters getting together to teach nutrition and education through different approaches within their, their subject matters, so coming together and working together. Experiential learning, which is actually getting kids hands-on with uh, anything from gardening to cooking uh, to grocery shopping, those types of things. Uh, parent, parental involvement, so getting parents involved in actually helping ch children make better decisions when it comes to nutrition. I'm going to cheat. A uh, literary, <laughs> literary abstraction, meaning reading stories or being read stories uh, about healthy food choices, and then game-based approaches, so be it board games or other types of games designed uh, to help make you may help you make better food choices, and finally web-based approaches. So those are the eight strategies, um, and of those strategies, it was really interesting to kind of see what works. And this is what's really interesting reading this research is having a better idea of where I should be focusing my efforts in order to be as efficient as possible. Now, when they looked at the, the kind of outcomes for all these strategies, four, four main categories, four main categories of uh, outcomes, food consumption and energy intake, uh, fruit and vegetable uh, consumption and preference, 
uh, reduce uh, sugar intake, not counting uh, whole fruits, and finally, uh, overall nutrition, nutritional knowledge. So me, my big thing is that my kids aren't eating a lot of sugary based drinks. We don't serve junk food at the school. There might be a pizza day once every three months. And aside from that, uh, there's nothing really super unhealthy that's being, uh, that's being fed to the kids. My biggest issue was getting the kids to really understand what makes for a healthy and balanced nutrition so they can make better choices every time they go up to that buffet. And I've been thinking about all kinds of things throughout the year. Um, and I was really happy to kind of read this research and get a better idea of what actually works when it comes to that. Um, and by the way, it, I do teach it in phys ed, but if you look at the Shape America grade level outcomes, you notice that there's not a whole lot going on in nutrition at the elementary level. I think there's one outcome, maybe two outcomes that kind of go across the sequence. Uh, so not, not a huge, huge focus there. I am trying to see if I can work with my science teacher because here in Quebec, our science curriculum actually follows, uh, covers a lot that has to do with nutrition. So try and do some cross-curricular stuff. But that being said, before I talk into cross-curricular stuff, the biggest surprise to me was the fact that of the eight strategies I read you before, of those eight strategies, what really works best is experiential learning. So getting the kids hands-on involved with food. Now, at my school, um, we do this awesome thing where we do a lot of urban gardening. And I'm going to shamelessly plug my brother's business because uh, my brother actually donated a whole bunch of urban planters to the school and he really got the ball rolling when it came to that. Um, so just to give you an idea, at the high school we have these urban planters and I'll, I'll link them down below in the comments if you're watching the replay on YouTube. Uh, where like these pyramid planters where you fill them up with soil and then you can plant all kinds of veggies, herbs, all kinds of stuff growing from there. We also have these big garden towers, which is a much larger thing that you can fill up with soil. Same kind of idea. It's vertical gardening. We have um, these different pots that hang off the walls that are planted with all kinds of herbs and all kinds of things uh, that we can consume and add to our food. So lots and lots and lots of gardening going on. And my school is even going further in and building more gardens at the school to really make this a big thing. There was even talk today about a whole fruit garden and even potentially bringing in beekeeping into the school eventually, which I'm sure everybody will be super thrilled about. I love it. Uh, my, my cousin's a beekeeper and I think it's absolutely amazing, but a lot of people are terrified of bees. Um, so anyways, so we're already doing a lot of this experiential learning. So we, we do that. There are cooking classes um, offered as an ECA. Students do visit farms throughout the year, but I'm thinking that one of the issues is that there's no real scope and sequence to what we're doing in terms of nutrition education when it comes to this experiential learning. So I want to see how can we make it a sequence out throughout the, the, the seven years of elementary school if you're counting kindergarten and see how can we get kids involved in this experiential learning at each grade level throughout the year. So I'm going to work harder with the science teachers. I'm going to work harder with the green team at my school to see if we can kind of make that happen more um, so that moving forward, uh, kids have a lot of like hands on experience of where food comes from, the work that goes into producing food, uh, why is it better to eat whole foods and to eat processed foods, uh, and kind of feeling proud about the food that they're consuming. Uh, so really excited to kind of look into those things. I was talking to the green team leader today, which is a very t funny title, but I, I'm assuming that's her title. Um, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how we can kind of build on those types of things. Now, in terms of, of, of sugar, uh, sugar laden beverages and reducing uh, caloric intake and, and from those types of beverages, uh, it was interesting to see that cross curricular uh, um, strategies along with enhanced curriculum combined together, not stand alone, but combined together actually have a decent effect there. Uh, it's not something that I'm overly concerned about. I think my school eats really healthy. I'm really lucky to be a part of a community that uh, there's a lot of focus on health. Um, but definitely I want to keep building on that. So in terms of standalone nutrition programs, trying to build up the actual way that I present the outcomes that we work on in our teaching uh, in phys ed. And again, talking to the science teachers, trying to see if we can do something that would be a little cross-curricular where we can talk more about education throughout or, or nutrition education throughout the year and build on those kinds of ideas. But my biggest takeaway from reading this paper was really that Experiential learning is where it's at. It's what has the biggest effect uh, effect on students' uh, long-term uh, understanding of nutrition. And I, I want to see how we can get more of that going on. 
some ideas right off the top of my head like i was saying more gardening um, more visits to farms i would love to take my students to field trips to grocery stores where they can go and make choices and just see like this plethora we have two beautiful markets here in montreal i'd like to take them to the markets and get them to really connect with the farmers there and ask questions and i know they do that in kindergarten but i'd like to see it happening throughout the year where they can get a better understanding of where food is coming from and how they can eat food that's coming right from the soil rather than from out of a can um, and with all that knowledge then go back and talk about okay well how can we bring all these foods together to create nice balanced meals and what should your balanced meal look like and that's where really that that enhanced curriculum strategy is going to come in where i'm going to try and create visuals and things like that that are going to allow students to have a better idea of okay what does a balanced meal look like what should my plate look like um we've tried using the my plate system before uh there's there was all kinds of issues that because we have a lot of vegan students we have a lot of vegetarian students so they were concerned about the dairy and all that stuff but whatever maybe um but like how can we how can we build on that and make it a little bit of a uh, create a bit of a stronger approach so so yeah so that was the uh, i'll link to the paper below it's free to access it looks intimidating when you look at it because it looks like it's a billion pages long um it's like 30 pages really just unless you're really into learning about the methods and everything, you know, you can always kind of skip that part and go right to the discussion um, and, and then uh, kind of see what the results were as well. Um, but really interesting. It'd be cool to see what your school is doing. Anybody here tuned in right now? Anybody do anything like urban gardening or anything like that at their schools um, or have like a green team or, or do you use fuel up to play at your school, whatever it may be. You know, if you're watching live here, you feel free to add it or you can hit me up on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave anything you do in terms of nutrition education in your school. If you want to share, share it in the comments below. I would love to learn more about what works with your students so that I can see how I can bring it to my school. Totally steal your ideas, but give you all the credit. Um, so yeah, let me see how we're doing here for time. Oh, 12 minutes. I did pretty good. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Tomorrow is Big Idea Thursday. Uh, you'll see the full, at the end of this video, you'll see the full list of every, each day's theme. Again, my name is Joey Fight from thephysicaleducator.com. Uh, I hope you had a fantastic day teaching, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.